Well, I hope you're having a good week this week. This is a Wednesday night service. We're continuing our series on the Word Sower. So I hope you're sowing the Word with Jesus, uh, speaking His Word and seeing things happen in your life. He's the one that gave His life for us, and we're supposed to give our life for Him. So if you just give your life for Him by sowing the Word and always speaking the Word, when people have problems, situations, circumstances in their life, our counsel should always come from the words of Jesus. That's where we should give them the counsel. Well, this is what Jesus said. Hallelujah. So always be a word sower. Praise God. I don't know if we may get through tonight. may not. But praise God. It's offering time right now. So we just love God. Love giving into His kingdom. Oh, we just love uh, that He's faithful to us. And we love being faithful to Him. We, we, we're so thankful being a covenant with Him. Amen. So uh, if you've uh, been giving in your offerings, you can see there's many different uh, places on the offering envelope that you can give to. And also two that ain't on there is the new building or church and the van. We just believe in God. He's going to tell us exactly what to do in every situation. The Holy Ghost is going to lead us and guide us. And we're going to be directed by the Holy Ghost and what to do in every situation that we do. Amen. Man, we're just so thankful. For God taking care of us, watching over us, and keeping us safe and showing us exactly what to do in every situation. Well, praise God. And just, I'm so glad he can't do without me because I'm a hilarious, prompt to do it giver whose heart is in my giving. I get excited about giving into the kingdom. Amen. I'm praying for more money to come to me so I can give more to him. Amen. Well, just lift up your offering envelope. Father, we just thank you and praise you for these tithes and offerings. Father, we give you all praise and all glory. We thank you for taking care of everything in every situation, every circumstance, always supplying our need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Not in, it's not even affiliated with this world. It's your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And we're so thankful for that. And we thank you for giving us the, the power to obtain wealth. Oh, we're so thankful, Lord Jesus. You are wonderful. You take care of us and watch over us. Oh, we're so glory. We praise you. We're so, your presence is glorious and we thank you for it. Oh, thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, let's turn to Mark chapter 4. We're in Mark chapter 4. We're going to read, start reading uh, with verse 13. We did 1 through 12 last week. And this week, he's going to, Jesus here, he's explaining the parable. So he's going to tell them what this means because he's speaking to them in parables and they have no idea what he's talking about. So he gets them alone, you know, the 12, and then there was some extra that hang around because just like I said last week, you hang around to hear the stuff. That when, when, a, when you get around a preacher that ain't in the pulpit, you can hear a lot more things and be taught a lot more by just their everyday life and their everyday speech. It says in verse 13, Then he said to them, Don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand all of the parables? See, they, they can't understand, if they can't understand the parable, no, if they can't get a, the, the revelation, the enlightenment from heaven on what this parable means, then they're not going to be able to understand any parables. And we know Jesus is teaching them here in parables. He's teaching them in parables. So we got to learn to, to, to get a, the heavenly Father to tell us, like he told Peter who Jesus was, that the heavenly Father through the Spirit tells me and you that this is what this means. This is what this means in the Word. He said the sower sows the Word. So we know the sower, he's not talking here about a farmer going out there and throwing plants in the field. He's using that as an analogy. But he's telling us the sower is the one that sows the word. So the question is today, as you're following Jesus, you're a Christian, you say you're part of his kingdom, are you sowing his word? Well, a lot of people, uh, it's, a, it's, it's really a shame to be able to say, a lot of people in the body of Christ that say they're Christians, they don't even know his word. So you got to learn his word. So in verse uh, 15 there, it says, Some are like the word sown on the path, when they hear, immediately Satan comes and takes away the word sown in them. And we know that when they when they hear immediately, 
Man, Satan ain't going to give no time to this person to, to be able to digest any of the word that's sown into their life. Immediately, he's going to come and take it away from them. See, Satan, he's, he's prompt to do what his job is and what he's supposed to do. See, the problem with us is we may delay and, and think we got time to, to receive this, but remember, Satan, he don't never delay. If you take a hesitation and delay, the devil may come in and steal that, and you was going to try to get it later. Maybe an altar call was given, and you felt the Lord pricking your heart. You know you needed to change. You know you needed things in your life to change. But you just sat there and sat there, and then you get out of the service, and you think in the service, man, I'll do it next week. But when you leave, it's taken away because Satan immediately come to take it because he don't want you following he don't want you following Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. He wants you to follow Him. He wants me and you to do what He tells us to do. He don't want us to follow Jesus Christ. He don't want us to hear the Word and receive it, hear to do it. He wants us to hear it and then let Him steal it from us so we never get to walk in it. And and so it's sown, and, and we as people, some, we may hesitate, but we got to remember we don't need to hesitate. Because if we hesitate, Satan will beat us there because he ain't hesitating. He's he not waiting. He's on it quickly. He's trying to take it from me and you. Verse 16 says, And others are like seeds sown on rocky ground. When they hear the word, immediately they receive it with joy. You know, they receive it with joy. But then it says, But they have no root. They are short-lived. When distress or persecution comes because of the word, they immediately fall away. So they get excited, man. They're joyful. They hear this word, man. They receive it, and they're all on board. But then here it comes. Here comes strife. Things coming from the outside. You know, distress, persecution come. And they ain't got the word planted in them. So they fall away from it. They don't, they, they don't really put the whole heart in hearing and doing what Jesus says. And we, I like uh, says they are short-lived. The sower in this parable is not blamed because his work wasn't lacking. Because his work was lacking. He worked what lacking. The, the, the sower sowed the word. He put, it, he put it in just like the other one, just like the one that sold on other grounds. He sold it. But the soil was so shallow, the apparent result was quick, and the disappointment was even quickly, e equally quickly. You know, it was evenly, evenly quick. So it was, all, it was took away as fast as it was put in. You got happy and full of joy, so excited. But just as fast as you get happy and full of joy, it, it, just that quick, it's taken away from you. You ain't happy and full of joy. That word was given to you. You were received it with gladness. You was happy. But then you let it be taken away from you before you could even walk in it. Why? Because of the other things in this life. The distress and persecution came and took it away from you. You just really didn't believe that Jesus was enough and could take care of you. So we got to trust that we will never be satisfied with temporary godliness. You ain't never going to be satisfied with just temporarily walking and following Jesus with slight impressions soon received and soon lost. No, you can't be just thinking, well, I'm going to get it this minute. Man, I'm happy. And all that in the next minute, you sad, depressed, upset because you didn't receive that. You received it with joy, but you couldn't keep it with joy because you didn't hear the word to do what it said to do. Hallelujah. I like in Matthew what it says about the scene on, uh, the seed on rocky ground. It says, fell on rocky ground where it didn't have much soil and it grew up quickly since the soil wasn't deep. What kind of people have shallow soil? Here you go. It's going to tell you, if you this kind of person has a shallow soul, you ain't got much deep roots in you of the Word. They are the kind of people who are always ready. Are you always ready? Always ready. But it can't seem to last in your life. Excited about going to church, but it can't seem to last in your life because you can't make your flesh... Keep it under so you can let the Spirit rule your life. Hello. they kind of people who are always ready, like a flock of sheep, to follow the leader. But their following is only temporary. They are, their affection is more affectatious. Affectatious. In other words, you, get, you, you see it and you like it. you are you are got your eyes uh, fixed on it. But really, it, it's really not affection. You don't have that affection in your life. You just, you just got a quick fix. You think everything's going to change quickly. And they profess to be Christians, but they will give up the profession before long. As far as they can be, they are sincere, but little there is of them. 
little there. Man, they're sincere. They're all in. They're gung ho. But there ain't much to it because you don't see them being faithful. You don't see them following Jesus every day on an everyday basis, wanting to hear from Him and do what He says. They're, 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 they can't stay with it long. They're, they really are sincere. They're sincere, but after all, a poor, feeble, fickle thing, they will soon be as sincerely wrong as they are sincerely right for the moment. They just live from moment to moment to moment to moment. They don't live in, Jesus said this, that's it, I'm following that, and the circumstances have got to change. You might be, uh, you, your checking account may be looking low, it may seem like you got more bills than you got money, but if you'll stick to the word that cannot lie and hear it to do it, you'll see that he said, my God shall supply all my needs. According to what? Not this world, but according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Man, we there ain't no better plan. No better assurance to know that He's going to take care of you than to know He's taking care of you from His riches in glory through Christ Jesus. Man, there ain't no better bank. There ain't no better uh, pension plan. There ain't no better retirement. There ain't no better savings account than to have heaven's account on your side and just waiting for you to, to <clears throat> access it by faith and believe God and you'll receive things that you never thought you could receive from Him because He can't lie and you're hearing His Word and you're confessing it and you're saying, I'm going to do what the Lord tells me to do. I'm going to follow His Word and I'm going to be out there sowing His Word into people's lives so have, they have the same chance to hear His Word and do what He says. Well, praise God. Verse 18 said, Others are like seeds sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word, but the worries of this age. Man, if you ain't found it in Christ right now, you can turn on the news, man, and the worries of this age will tear you up and steal the word from you. And before you know it, you're mad at everybody. Uh, and, and if you don't get it out of you quickly, you'll be mad at everybody you see, much less just the ones on the TV. That's why you can't live and walk in this stuff all the time. Praise God. you got to do what the Master says. The worries of this age, the deceitfulness, deceitfulness of wealth. Man, a lot of people walk in the deceitfulness of wealth. What is the deceitfulness of wealth? It's the seduction of wealth. Remember, Jesus told us uh, the love of money is the root of all evil. He done told us that you can't serve God in money, God in mammon. So he knew that wealth was going to be a seductive thing that the devil could use. I mean, remember he lifted, told Jesus if he would just do this, he would give him the whole world. That's seductive. The, the wealth and power of this world will seduce your flesh. But you've got to get out of your flesh, deny your flesh, and ask the Father to watch over you, take care of you, and ask Him to see, it through, see you through, and know that your wealth is based on heaven. So if it's based on heaven, you know that He's going to take care of you much better than this world can, because every day this world's uh, things are just dying away. But God's things uh, never fade away, never die away. They're eternal, praise God. And don't let the worries of, of this age or the deceitfulness of wealth come against you. And take you away from God. And then it says, And the desires of other things enter in and choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. Man, don't let the, the things of this world and the things you want and desire so much in this world come in and choke out what God really wants. And that is, God really wants me and you to produce fruit. So don't let them come in and choke that out and cause me and you to be unfruitful. What's unfruitful? Unfruitful is you ain't walking in love. You ain't walking in joy. You ain't walking in peace. Unfruitful is you ain't walking in the ways of God. Unfruitful is you ain't telling people about Jesus. Unfruitful is you ain't got no self-control. That's being unfruitful. Unfruitful is you ain't got the fruit of forgiving people when they do you wrong like Jesus forgave you when you did him wrong. <laughs> Man, I don't want to be unfruitful. I want to be fruitful for the Master so He can see in me how much I love Him, how much I've given myself for Him, only because of how much He loved me and gave Himself for me. And I like verse 19 here. It says, explained by Mr. Spurgeon here, other things enter in and choke the Word. How can there be room for Christ in the end when it is crowded with other guests? How can there be room for Jesus, the Christ, Christ, the, uh, the, the one that came from God, was sent from God, uh, 
who knows everything. Jesus, what He taught, said, and did. How can there be room in you and me for Christ, Jesus, for the message that came from the lips of Messiah Himself? How can there be room for that in us if we let all this other stuff be in us? Other stuff come in. What is the other stuff we just said? The worries of this age, the deceitfulness of wealth. The deceitfulness of wealth and the desires for other things. Man, we've got to make sure that our desire is for the Master. Our desire is for Him to come in and watch over us. Our desire is for Him to keep us safe. That's our desire. To hear what He's got to say and do it. That's mine and your desire. To walk and follow Jesus as He's the only one that can take us where we need to go. Because He's the only one that can get us to the Father. Because he's the only one that actually knows the Father, that accurately knows him. And he's the only one that can tell us about him. Amen. Man, he's wonderful. Hallelujah. <clears throat> then we get to verse 20, man. This is the one we need everybody to get to. Just like I said, ain't but a 25% chance of, of that seed being sown fall on good ground. A 75% failure rate right here. A lot of people don't like them odds. But with Jesus, those odds are great. Why? Because he tells us here in verse 20, part of the 25% is, and those that, uh, those, and those like seeds sown on good ground, hear the word, welcome it, hear the word and welcome it, and then you produce. How do you hear the word and welcome it? You hear what Jesus got to say, you receive what he says, then you do it, and then you reap. Hello? So we're going to hear here, uh, this is when you... You, when you are, are fruitful, when the seed's sown on good ground, you hear the word, you welcome it, and you produce fruit. Some produce 30, some produce 60, and some produce 100 times its sown. Man, God's a, a 30, 60, 100 times uh, sown person, a uh, uh, spiritual father to give back to us as we, his children, to take us to places we never could be. See, this we can't look at this as an earthly way and try to relate this to earthly ways. Some people say, well, I give a thousand, I get thirty thousand, or I get six thousand, I get a hundred thousand. And people just don't understand. If you take that for, this is talking about producing fruit in your life, fruit that people can see, that's Christian fruit. This ain't talking about where you can take a dollar, I can give a dollar this Sunday, and then I'm, during the week, I'm going to reap $100. And next week, I'm going to give $100. Then the next week, I'm, I'm going to reap $10,000. And then the next week, I'm going to give that $10,000. And then the next week, I'm going to reap a million. And then I'm going to give that million. And then I'm going to reap $100 million. My goodness, in a month, a month and a half, you'd be a multimillionaire. But this is talking about you need to, you, what you need is a multimillionaire of love on your life. Multi-millionaire uh, fruit of forgiveness in your life. Multi-millionaire fruit of, of the Holy Ghost and Him teaching you how to walk in joy and peace. That's, that's the multi-millionaire to me to be in the fruits of, uh, in your life that reflect Jesus Christ, the people around you. Hallelujah. That's where we need the 130, 40, uh, 60, and 100 fold. That's where we need people to see us in our life. So you need to be a word sower and you sow the word and that word will come back 30, 60, and 100 fold. We don't need to worry about what we're planting like the farmer. He, he, all he knows, he, I'm putting these seeds in the ground. He ain't worried about how they're going to leave that seed and become that big plant that produces fruit. I mean, you can't worry about that with the word. He just says plant the word and it's going to produce 30, 60, 100 fold. So he ain't asking you to figure out what's going to come out of it. He's just asking me and you to tell people and plant the seed in their life. And then he'll worry about how to get it to come up out of them. That's why Paul said some plant, some seed, some harvest. I mean, some plant, some water, some harvest. Hello, the seed's planted, then others come in water, and then others come in harvest. Man, we've got to learn to follow Jesus and do what his word says and quit trying to do what me and you want to do, but follow him and do what he says to do. Amen? And then in verse, verse 21, he tells the heading of this is called using your light. So really, in this sowing of the word, people got to see us Use the light because we are the light of this earth. Jesus is the light of the world. But he calls me and you to be lights hooked up with him so people can see him. It says in verse 21, He also said to them, Is the lamp brought to put under a basket or under a bed? Isn't it to be put on a lampstand? 
you, do you, if if your house is gets dark at night and the power goes out, do you do you light a candle or, or or light a flashlight and then go over and set a box on top of it? Why would you do that? The purpose was to light up the darkness. Well, the purpose of me and you getting born again is to be ambassadors of Christ. We're supposed to be ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're supposed to be lighting up the world around us by telling people about what the Master's done and what He wants to do in their life. Man, He's just wonderful. Jesus is wonderful. He, he's got it all worked out if we would just learn to follow Him. If we would just learn to follow Jesus and what He taught, what He said, and what He did, then we would learn to follow exactly what it means to be with Jesus, to be with Him, to do what He says. We, we, we would know exactly what that means. And we would follow Him and do what He says. Praise God. Verse 22 says, There is nothing hidden, nothing hidden, hello, nothing hidden that will not be revealed, and nothing concealed that will not be brought into the light. You, you may be in church today. You may be somebody that thinks you a Christian, that you, you know, you think you're following Jesus. And you got all kind of stuff hidden in your life. And you may be somebody following Jesus, going to church all the time. But you've got sin, hidden sins following that you're trying to keep away from people knowing. Well, get ready because he done told you right here. Nothing's going to be hidden. Eventually it's coming out. Do you really want people to know about what you're doing right now? Or do you want to repent and get that off of you before God causes it to be revealed so people see you and you get embarrassed? Why don't you just go ahead and repent now, follow Jesus, and walk away from that darkness? So he don't have to reveal it and you get embarrassed. But if he has to reveal it, reveal it and you get embarrassed, so to bring you to him, he's gonna do it. Don't let don't let don't hide things from him. Don't conceal things. Why? Because they're gonna be brought out to the light. The light's gonna show who me and you me and you really are. We'll be judged by the light of his word. Hallelujah. His word is powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, cuts asunder to the bone and marrow. It separates you. Hello. And then it says after that, in verse 23, it says about verse 22, if something's hidden, it's going to be revealed. Something concealed is going to be brought out in the light. He said, if anyone has ears to hear, let them listen. Man, if you got ears to hear what the Master's saying, in other words, you got ears that want to hear from the Master, that you really want to follow Him and do what He says, and you got ears to hear, then it's time for you and me to listen. Listen to what He's saying. Listen to Him so He can tell us what to do. Listen to Him so He can show us which way to go every day. Listen to Him. Follow His guidance and His leadership. Remember, His Word is, that's what builds your faith, the words that came from the lips of the Messiah Himself. So you've got to receive faith from getting in the Word and finding out who He really is. So if you have ears to hear what the Master's saying, listen and do what He says. What's the ears to hear? Like you hear, he said, don't forsake to assemble yourselves. The matter some is, but it's ordered one another as you see the day approaching. So other, another version says, don't quit attending church. You hear that, and you don't hear it, and, and just let it go and be stolen away from you because that good seed fell on some rocky ground. But you hear it, it falls on good ground. You hear it to do it, and you say, devil, I'm not following you no more. And then Sunday, you're, right, you're back in church, and you don't miss no more. You're faithful. That's what hearing the Word and doing it, that's what it means. I hear what His Word says, and I do it. I have ears to hear, but I don't just hear. I listen, and listen means to do. Hear means to do. So I have His words. I have ears to hear, I'm hearing to do, and then I listen to it to do what he's saying. And then you'll walk this out in your life and people will see who Jesus really is in me and you. Verse 24, 24 says, And he said to them, now, now Jesus is telling them, Pay attention to what you hear. By the measure you use, it will be measured to you, and more will be added to you. He said, Pay attention to what you hear. In other words, you're hearing these things. You're hearing the Word. You're hearing the ministers minister the gospel of Jesus Christ. You're hearing all this Word. And be careful to hear it and hear what the Master says because the measure of it that you use, that's how you're going to be judged. It's going to be measured back to you. So if you want to get a good measure back to you, you better start using all that you hear from Him. It's amazing to me as a, as a minister, as a pastor, how you can be up there preaching you just look around the congregation and some people ain't paying no bit of attention to you but they're in there hearing the same word. Some of them are, are dilly-dallying, writing. Some of them are on Facebook. Some of them are texting. Some of them are on uh, 
Snapchat, I guess. Some of them are on, uh, what's all, all them others? I don't know what all of them is. But on those things, uh, doing that stuff instead of paying attention to the word coming forth. But don't don't think that God is is not go, is going to be mocked because you in that service hearing what He's saying, telling you through the word, through the minister, you're going to be held accountable for that. And if you didn't hear that because you was on Facebook, then you're going to be in trouble and have to give an account for that. Hello. So best thing, if you can't control yourself with your phone, is to leave it in your car or if. if or bring it in and make sure it's turned off so it don't even bother you when you're in the service. Amen. So you can hear the word to hear all of it. So you have a measure of, I've heard all of it, Father. And the, I want you to measure back to me all of it because I heard it all and I'm going to do it all. Amen. So I'm hearing it to do it. Praise God. And, and then it said, more will be added to you. Yeah, because if we pay attention and hear what he says and our purpose in our heart to do what he says, he said more going to be added to us. I don't know about y'all, but I like that more business. <laughs> he give, You just want this much peace and he gives you much more peace. You just want to walk in this much joy and he gives you much more joy where you can't even control it. Hello? Man, you believe him for this much money, he just brings in a lot more than that and you you just in awe. And you have to step back and say, look what the Lord has done. Oh, oh, look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. Look what the Lord has done. He took care of my finances. Look what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. It come back to me. 30, 60, 100 fold that he's taking care of me in every situation. Why? Because I love him to do what he says. Because he first loved me. And verse 25 says, For whoever has, more will be given to them. And when you have this word in you and it just keeps on you, you sowing and reaping, sowing and reaping, more going to be given to you. But whoever don't have, in other words, you ain't produced nothing in your life. You, 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 you've, you've heard this, but you ain't heard it to do or, or listened to it to do. You ain't heard the words of Jesus to follow them and do what he says. It says, and you don't have nothing, but it says, even what you don't have, I mean, even what you, even what he has, will be taken away from him. That's 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 a sad state right there. Where you've got a little bit of something, but you won't hear his word to do it. So what the little bit of stuff you got, he ends up having to take it away from you and give it to somebody else because you're stubborn and won't do what he says. Oh Lord, give us peace. Holy Ghost, give us peace. Show us how to show us how to walk in humility before God. Don't let us think we got it all made and all we know how to do everything right. Because obviously this wouldn't be in your word if we didn't need this. So yes, we need this. So don't think you're somewhere you ain't. And when the little bit you got will be taken away from you, given to somebody else because you won't hear what Jesus says to do it. You only got ears to hear what you want to hear and not ears to hear what he wants to do in me and you. He wants to do something in me and you. That's what our master wants to do. Man, that's him. <laughs> that's our master praise God then we see here we go going now down here in verse 26 and we see this is the parable of the growing seed and it tells us what the growing seed is the growing seed is the kingdom of heaven it's like this he said a man scatters seed on the ground he sleeps and rises rises night and day the the seed sprouts and grows all those he, he don't even know how it happens this is what the kingdom of heaven is like. We're planting the seed. It, it sprouts and grows, but we don't even know how this happens. It's, it's a God thing, a heavenly thing, a, king, a heavenly kingdom thing, God's kingdom thing. It's not up to me and you have trying to figure out how it does it. This is up to me and you to just figure out Jesus said do it, so therefore he said do it, we're doing it. And we're going to tell people about the master. Hallelujah, tell them how good he is and spread that seed of the word. Hallelujah, that he said love your enemies, not, not hate them and fight them. Amen. Praise God. And then the soul produces a crop by itself. First a blade, then a head, and then the full grain of the head. Man, and then as soon as the crop is ready, he sends forth the sickle because the harvest has come. And we've got to understand Jesus told us that we need to be praying for God to send forth the laborers. Lord, we need you to send the laborers into the field. They're white with harvest. We need you to send it so they'll be reaped, so it'll be reaped. 
uh, into the kingdom so the Father can get ready and blow that trumpet and bring us all home. I don't know about y'all, but that's what I'm looking forward to is getting back with Him, getting home with Him. Amen? Getting with Him. <laughs> and then, he's, then, then the next little headline over here about the same, the kingdom of God, it's a parable of the mustard seed. He said in verse 30, with what can we compare the kingdom of God or what parable can we use to describe it? It's like a mustard seed that when it's sown upon the soul is the smallest of all the seeds on the ground. But when sown, it comes up, grows taller. It's a little seed there is, but it grows taller than all the garden plants, produces large branches to that the birds of the sky can nest in its shade. In other words, they can come. This is just a little bitty old, old, old seed, but it gets so big when it comes out and sprouts that the birds of the field can come and make nests in it. Just a little mustard seed. Can you imagine if you take the Word of God in you, put a little mix of faith of the, the uh, as small as a grain of mustard seed, and start speaking that Word, the, the results that you're going to have come back into your life? Because it's going to produce 30, 60, 100 fold. When you're out there sowing the Word in the people's life, it's going to come back to you. It's going to come back to you. His Word says it is. And then verse 33 says, using the, using the parables, he was speaking the word to them with many parables like these as they, were as they were able to understand. He did not speak to them without a parable parably, privately. However, he explained everything to his own disciples. He, he, he spoke to them in parables every time. Every time. And sometimes they understood and sometimes they didn't. It's up to whether God let them understand. To understand a parable is a heavenly story uh, with an earthly meaning. God has to reveal that to you. Praise God. So once he reveals that to you and gives you that gift of being able to understand, man, that's when things can start happening in your life. You hear things other people can't hear. Somebody can preach something in the Word and you hear something different. You get more enlightenment on it. You get more meat out of the Word because you've been spending time with the Master sowing his Word and sowing his Word and sowing his Word, sowing his Word, and now you're reaping 30, 60, 100 fold. Amen. I like the hundredfold because if you look it up what that means the hundredfold means it's complete and I want what, everything that comes from Jesus that comes to me I want it to be complete completely him amen completely not what I want it to be not what I want it to do not what I want it to say but what I want the master to for him to receive glory out of my life hallelujah I, I want him to know that he can count on me. Y'all know in, in verse 25 there, remember it says, but whatever has, more will be given to him, and whatever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. Well, that in the footnotes, that's it, whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. Some have been made worse by the preaching of the word. Some people have been made worse by the preaching of the word. Why is that? Because... That ought to have made them better. The word that was preached should have made them better, but they wouldn't listen to do or listen to hear. They were hearing but not listening. They wasn't hearing to listen to do, so the word they were preached, now that word that they were preached to that they heard but they didn't do is going to be the same word that's going to judge them. So they would have been better off if they never heard it. He said, just like it says in Hebrews, it's better never to know me than to know me, taste the good things of me, and then turn away from me. Man, Lord, we need, we need a move in these last days. Oh, Holy Ghost. We need a move of the Spirit in these last days to come. Oh, to come in our churches and set us free. Oh, praise God. Come in our church. Oh, get a hold of them, Lord. Get a hold of the young people, the older people, the middle-aged people, and the kids. Get a hold of us, Lord, and change. we need a move. We need a move of the Holy Ghost to change our perspective on who He is and who the Father is and who Jesus is. We need a revival. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, praise God. If you're here today and you need to give your whole life to Jesus Christ, it's time to do it. <clears throat> Just give Him your whole life. <laughs> Just say this. Say, Father God, I come to you today. I confess with my mouth. Jesus Christ is my Lord. I believe in my heart, God, that you raised him from the dead. 
And according to your word, I'm saved. Now, if you said that with your mouth and you really believe that Jesus Christ is your Lord, you made him, you confessed him, and you go tell some people, man, I want y'all to know that Jesus Christ is my Lord now. And then you believe in your heart God raised him from the dead. Then you have to understand the word says you're a brand new creature. Old things have passed away. What's old things? Bad habits. A drunkard. Going to wild parties. Smoking marijuana. Snorting cocaine. Smoking cigarettes. Talking bad about people. Disobeying God. Causing division. Huh? A tail bearer. All that should pass away. Behold, all things should become new. Because according to uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, he said, I'm a new creation. And if you look it up, it's a new species of being. I'm totally different than I used to be in him. Huh? And then Paul says, oh, it's no longer I that live, but Christ liveth in me. The life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. Man, just believe God to take care of you, to watch over you, and believe him to keep you safe. I'll believe him to watch over your family, keep your family safe. Just believe him. Oh, we love you so much. Man, I just I just pray for y'all. I believe you're going to be at church faithfully, and we're gonna, we'll be there Sunday at 1030. Man, just be thankful. This is this Sunday's Father's Day. No greater father mean you have than the ones that have become Christians and made Father God our Father, Abba Father. Amen, the one we love, the Father in heaven. Oh, thank you so much, for Jesus, for revealing to us who he really is. Oh, we're so thankful. Man, we're so thankful to y'all. Make sure you put in your in your, your alarm 714 every night. If you don't do it, you'll miss it. Set that time, and when it goes off, just start praying and pray for every how long the Lord leads you to pray. The Holy Ghost leads you to pray. Man, we love you so much, and we'll see y'all Sunday. Have a blessed and happy week, and invite people and bring people, and believe God the Holy Ghost is going to flow through that place and change people's lives. Amen.